Welcome back, everybody, to uh, <laughs> I don't know why that was so mysterious. First Ring Daily. <laughs> yeah. I'm 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 back in the studio, which is you know six feet from the other studio. Um, and it Paul, looks so different. Yeah, it, you know it. It makes you wonder, Paul. When is your studio going to do? Uh... <laughs> Well, like uh, iTunes for the Windows Store, my uh, studio has been pushed back to 2018. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so uh, this isn't directly tied, but we, um, uh, my wife and I, have decided to move our offices within the house. So the room oh, I'm in now used to be like a. Say you were going to move. <laughs> a den. Yeah, we're going to move to a different state again. Um, it, it used to be kind of a den or whatever. Obviously, there's a fireplace here. Um, it's too big for my office. This is too much empty space in here. It's stupid. So. She actually moved upstairs to one of the extra bedrooms because apparently we have 17 extra rooms we don't need in this house. And I'm going to move into what she was using as her office before. Um, and I mm -hmm. need to, we're going to add French doors to the room like I did actually in my old office back in Dedham. Um, so it's, it's weird because the new place, the new office will be roughly in the same place in the house that my old one was looking out onto the same room that the old one did, you know, so uh, as part of that, um, we're going to have the guy, the carpenter guy, because originally we were going to do construction down in the basement and now we're not going to, cause everything got so expensive. So we're going to have him hang the TV down there, uh, that is necessary for the uh, studio. So basically all that has to happen is going to paint a wall. And then I actually have a, over my, I guess his shoulder, you can see like a bookshelfy looking thing. Um, mm -hmm. in that area of the basement, there's a similar, a similar thing uh, to that. So I'm going to put some tech stuff in there and I'll use yep. that as the studio. So I guess what I'm trying to say is when it's ready, uh, <laughs> someday, uh, someday, maybe, maybe in the, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll, we'll cross our fingers and hold out for 2018. <laughs> It will definitely happen in 2018. I can't imagine it slipping past 2018. <laughs> well, make two of us <laughs> cautiously optimistic that this will happen. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. as you pointed out, Paul, the iTunes, this isn't a huge surprise. I mean, well, maybe it kind yeah. of is, considering they promised this a what build, which was in May. Was that May? Was it May? Yeah, I think it was. Was it? I think it was. God. Yeah. I mean, I, this always seemed a little far-fetched to me. I, the notion that Apple would support the Windows Store in any way, shape, or form seemed kind of odd to me. I didn't see the mm -hmm. point of it. I still kind of don't. I mean, uh, one version that works in all versions of Windows makes sense to me. But uh, the most interesting thing about them delaying it is that they actually spoke on the record about it. Apple did for the first time ever, I believe. Yeah. Because um, previously this announcement came from Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And... Um, they acknowledge that they are working on it and um, it's taking a little longer than they had hoped or whatever. I know that feeling. Um, so yeah, I mean, we'll hopefully we'll see it soon. Although I intend to never run it ever, 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 <laughs> because it is iTunes. Well, I look forward to your hands on post of iTunes in the windows store. <laughs> someone should write that story someone who um doesn't value their time or <laughs> actually it might be lo worth looking at I, I think one of the key things with this is device management right i mean no well one of the things you can do with uh, itunes on windows is um flash your iphone or whatever back to some previous rom version yep. right so if you're in the developer program for example and you're testing a beta version and you want to go back to the normal one you can do it but you need itunes so uh, I guess it's conceivable I could have to use it at some point in the future, but uh, one thing I will not be using it for is listening to music. Yeah, yeah, no, that I do. I haven't used that. I, if anytime iTunes yeah. is open on my computer, either it was an accident or something has <laughs> yep. terribly gone yep. wrong in my life. There's no, no yeah. real middle ground. There. Yeah, there's no happy reason to run iTunes. Also, it's a little goofy that they don't have a desktop client for Apple Music, right? I know that iTunes is that client, mm -hmm. but it looks and works nothing like the version you get on mobile. And it seems like creating such a thing wouldn't be too hard. Um, I don't know if it makes sense for them to do it on windows, maybe not, but you, at least on the Mac, it's or a web based, right? Do a web web version of the interface that would support everything. I mean, 
Why don't they yeah. have that? I don't know. These are all fair questions, Mr. Throt. Mm -hmm. And I, I have no answer. None. Um, but Paul, what I, what I do have an answer for mm -hmm. is this guy right here. After six right. months, I've been using this guy. It's hard to actually believe that this thing has been out that long. I mean, it I seems like just yesterday that we were there. But uh, I've been using this guy for six months. And it's still good. I mean, it's it's one of those things that really there's no news here because it's just it operates as expected. I'm getting solid eight hours of battery well, life. And, uh, that is news, yeah. right? When you think about it. Yeah. I mean, one of the big issues with its predecessor and with Surface Book was that they were incredibly unreliable out of the gate. And, you know, they got better over time, obviously. But anytime mm -hmm. a new version of something like this comes out, you kind of have to look at it and wonder. I'm sure with your Surface Book 2. In the back of your mind, you were like, man, this thing better not screw up. I better not open the bag and have it be hot. I better not hear it yep. hissing when it's closed. Mm -hmm. Like, you worry about it, right? And so I do think it's notable with this product that, yeah, like I've had the same experience. It's just, it's fine. It works great. Yeah, and that's that's really all she wrote on this one is that if you buy a Surface Pro, you are going to be happy with the Surface Pro. There's no major limitations, um, no reports of them catching on fire. And uh, <laughs> Yep. Yeah. No explosions, no histrionics. It's good. Yeah. And uh, how's that uh, that Surface laptop working out for you, Paul? It's great. I mean, I uh, the way I kind of wrote it up is that it's um, it, it's the other half of the purchase decision making thing that we all do, which is that there's an emotional element to it. And sure. I think logically, you can look at something like Surface laptop and say it has one USB port. It has zero USB-C or Thunderbolt 3 ports, right? Uh, it's mm -hmm. a standard laptop. Microsoft made their first laptop five years after making their first computer and 25 years after the first laptop appeared or whatever it is. Um, maybe 30 years, whatever. Um, and, you, and, you know, it's expensive. It's a premium product, et cetera, et cetera. But the thing is, and you know this, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's just, it's yeah. so beautiful. It's beautiful to look at. It's beautiful to use. It's nice to carry. It looks great. People ask you about it, um, want to know about it. Uh, a lot of people, I would imagine, assume it's a Mac, too. If you don't see the logo on the back, I think that would be one of the first things people might believe. And um, this is a uh, – it's an interesting category in a way because it's kind of on the low end of the premium scale in the sense that it's like $1,000-ish. It's the same price as a MacBook Air, which is a really horribly out-of-date product now. Um, and I, I – I think that's kind of why they released it. I think they were going for the MacBook Air jugular there. And I don't know. I, I It's one of those things like I, it, it's hard for me because I, I try to find value in things. And, and the value here is not objective. It's, it's subjective. It's you either love the way this thing looks and you just don't care about the rest of it. And you just get it. Mm -hmm. because, and it will be awesome when you use it. The screen's beautiful. Super high res. Three by two. Great keyboard and touchpad. Um, you know, light, thin, gorgeous, you know, but some people will look at it and say, it's got a rug on it and it's not serviceable, which it isn't. And it only has one USB port, which it does. You know, there's all these, um, very logical complaints you can make about it, you know? And yet I, I, I just, there's just something about it. It's great. Yeah. That's, uh. I don't know. I'm still holding up for the shag carpet edition, but you are. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> there is sort of is one, by the way. If you get an Eve Five or a V, whatever the name of that is, which is that mm -hmm. um, crowdsourced Surface Pro clone, um, which I do have. Uh, actually, I don't see it right here, but it's in for review. Um, th their version of the type cover is kind of like a shag carpet version of the Alcantara thing. Like it's it's literally Alcantara, but it is a thicker cut fiber or what I don't know I, what <laughs> the term is for rugs <laughs> yeah it's uh the, the razor was set to three instead of two uh, you know I don't know yeah I was trying to think of uh <laughs> the movie the which is not a not a strong point in my life but it's uh when you said a rug the only thing that popped into my hand was the big Lebowski when they're talking mm -hmm. about uh, the area rugs and yeah that's yeah actually as I said it I thought of a toupee um, and oh, yeah. it's nothing like a toupee because it will never come off of this thing. It is so glued on that if you needed to replace anything under there, Microsoft would just give you a refurbished unit. I bet I, there's no way they're ever going to do the work to fix this thing. It's just a bizarre 
uh, you know, if you look at the iFixit thing for this, it's crazy. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the least serviceable computer products ever created. Yeah. Cause you got to get through that glue, which is, yeah, that's not going to be, Imp it's impossible. You, you'd have to destroy it. Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, I'm actually curious about your next little endeavor here. So you've been doing mm -hmm. this kind of alternative carrier thing, at least here to people in the U.S. It should hopefully be interesting. Um, if you're abroad, yeah. maybe not so much. But uh, so you're, <laughs> if you're a chick. Oh, you mean if you are international? I see. Yes. No. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. If you were outside of the confines of yes. Verizon and AT and T. Uh, so you've got a Mint E SIM. Mint E SIM. A what? Mint. Mint. <laughs> it's a min sim sim. Um, yeah, the service is called min sim, super low price. Um, the reason I looked into this was not to like switch carriers or whatever. I'm using Google Project Fi uh, on my Google device, you know, with that, that service is limited to just a handful of devices. But I love it. And it's, it's, it's what I think of as low cost in the sense that uh, you pay $20 a month for the basic service, which is, you know, uh, unlimited text and calling. And then you pay $10 per gigabyte for data and you only pay for what you need. Or actually, I should say you only pay for what you use. So I've signed up for the lowest tier, which is one gig. And if I go over that, I just pay in $10 increments, you know, for the amount that I actually use. So if I use, you know, 1.1 gigabytes, I pay $11. I don't pay 20. I pay what I use. It's, it's nice. Um, I wasn't trying to replace Project Fi and I'm not still sure that I might, but uh, what I was looking for was like a low cost, cost way to get SIMs to put in my other phones because I have to test multiple devices all the time and I need to see what call quality is like. You know, I have to be able to call mm -hmm. myself, essentially call my wife or whatever from a secondary phone. And that means I want one or more, uh, ideally two SIMs that I can kind of pop around to different devices as I test. So I, w I was just looking for cheap, you know, but in investigating this and in writing about it for premium users, um, a few people recommended this service and which they're using just as their carrier. And it's sort of like, what's the term like N NVMO or M, you know, the mobile, yeah, that's how well, it's basically, it's, it's sort of like that. Although, uh, it's mint sim technically is, is sort of the Costco of, uh, wireless providers in the sense that they're doing a wholesale thing. And so the way it works is you can pay for blocks of months and it's super cheap. So $15 a month gets you uh, unlimited talk and data in the United States and two gigabytes of, I'm sorry, unlimited talk and calling and two mm -hmm. gigabytes of data. Um, if I use two gigabytes of data on Project Fi, that would cost me $40 and some change, you know, after taxes and fees. So that's a significant savings. If you buy three months up front, which is $45, right now you get free more months for free. So you're getting six months of that service for $45, which is $7 and 50 cents a month. It's, it, it's like, what? So it, it's yeah. so cheap. Like it kind of makes sense for me just to get it and leave it on the phone and just use the phone like that. It's fine. Like it's, and it, it, the reason I wrote about it for as sort of a review, it's just a, like a first impressions or hands on or whatever, uh, is that I think people should know about this. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, people will poke holes in it. It's, um, they're using the T-Mobile network that may or may not work for you depending where you live or where you go. Um, there's no international data. Uh, that's an issue for me. That's one of the things I really like about Project Fi. There's no visual voicemail. That might be an issue for iPhone users in particular, or people who get a lot of voicemail calls, I guess. Um, that's about it. I mean, it. I, I've heard customer service isn't that great. Um, I, you know, <laughs> I haven't experienced that, but okay. I mean, that's probably fair. Sure. But at these prices, I mean, my God, you know, um, I think the, the, the point at which the big carriers in the U S like uh, AT&T Verizon or whatever makes sense financially is when you have a lot of people on a plan, a family plan. You know, my wife ha mm -hmm. is on Verizon and she has uh, five people on it. My two kids, her and her parents, and I don't know what they pay exactly, but if you were to go there as an individual, I mean, I think you could squeak in it with like 45, $50, but I mean, realistically speaking, most people are probably spending 65, $70 on an individual plan at a big carrier. When you compare that to the 23 to $30 that I pay on Project Fi, you can sort of understand why I like it, especially with the perks. But sure. then you can go down to you know $15 or for, for the next six months, uh, $7.50. It's like, seriously? That's probably one-tenth the cost of what a typical Verizon AT&T person is spending on an individual plan today for that amount of data. Or maybe they get a little bit more data, but... Um, 
I just think it's tremendous. I just think people need to know about it. That's all. I, here it is. Please investigate it. See if it makes sense for you. I just think it's a great thing for people to know about. Yeah. No, I mean, it's definitely a way to cut the cost, right? If you don't need the support and you don't need a subsidized cell phone, that's uh, – Yep. Oh, that's the other – yeah, of course. That's the other thing. Yeah, you want to, you have to bring your own phone. So, you know, the, the big um, phone makers all have those plans now. If you, want to, if you want to do that separately, I know you're kind of against this type of thing, but – um, one of the niceties mm. of Verizon or whatever is that you can wrap that into your bill and you just have the yep. one bill, but you could achieve the same thing if you wanted, you know, Apple will sell you an iPhone through their upgrade program or, uh, through an installment plan or whatever. Um, Google does this. I think Samsung does it. I think the big guys all pretty much do that, but you could all, you know, if you can't afford such a thing, you could come here with a, a two or $300 Motorola or whatever, and it would work fine on this. You know, this is a great way to save money. There you go. I'm trying to multitask and I'm failing on multiple levers. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying yeah, to uh, yeah. respond to an email while you were talking mm-hmm. about Mint. Keep talking, and, Paul. And you keep, keep talking while I try to proofread this. <laughs> let, let me, uh, like, let me recap phone? what I just said so Brad can finish his email. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yep. I, I'm sure you probably saw, but T-Mobile actually just bought a essentially a TV service, kind of like a direct TV mm. type mm. competitor. So be curious to see how yes. these guys evolve because yes. T-Mobile has been kind of the one I'm thinking like, you know, if I'm going to switch off Verizon here, it's going to be to T-Mobile. And so I'm watching what they're yeah. doing actually pretty yeah. close. Of course. And, and you know, we saw that Qualcomm thing where they talked about 5G networking and the instantaneous access to cloud-based data and what a change that's yep. going to be. And it's easy to imagine why wireless providers would start looking at TV services because the future of TV is IP-based and um, – yep. You know, talk about getting one bill for everything. I mean, that's, you know, it's a viable goal for people. Like, I want to have everything through this one place and be able to come and go as I please. Um, yeah. So, yeah, definitely the future for these guys. Yeah. I agree. Uh, you got anything else for today, Paul? I'm in kind of a coma today. I don't know. Good. I mean, I've got... I'm so backed up on device reviews. I got to work on some of that stuff this week. I <laughs> just plugged in something that almost exploded for some reason. Um, I don't know. No, nothing specific, I guess. How about you? Uh, I do have a post. I think it'll probably go live on Therat. So, Paul, you've done your nice little health hack uh, series here. Mm-hmm. And um, yes. so I've been doing something a little bit different. Obviously, I still... Uh, I still splurge into the craft beer markets and the the mozzarella sticks of the world. But well, you are a uh, thin man. I mean, you can afford to do that, right? I mean, well, no, I, I, we, this is the problem. Like if I, yeah. well, actually, I don't really care anymore, to be honest. I was going to say something like, if I could eat you know, potatoes, I would. Actually, I wouldn't. I really don't care. But um, yeah, I mean, if you're lucky enough that your body is just efficient and is working properly, then... Ignore everything I've written, please. <laughs> and God well, bless you. The, but. the one thing I have done, though, Paul, and uh, I don't think mm-hmm. I ever told you this. So it's starting, uh, it was last January. I know I've said it a couple times where I realized I was walking like 600 steps a day in the house, which is uh, clearly a problem because the, yeah. you will die a very early death if you don't <laughs> yep. actually move oh, yeah. your bones. Um, so what I started doing is on every single conference call that I had where feasible, I was walking in my house. And so I oh, logged actually how far how far I walked. And since uh, the beginning of January, I'm over 32 miles. So how many, do you know how many steps you walk in a given day? Are you measuring it like uh, that? I, so if, if without doing, so if I just stay in my house and just an average mm-hmm. day without conference calls and I just sit and I don't make any attempt to do it, uh, yep. six to 700. Really? That's it? Yeah. That's it. I mean, even I would say, it, I, I mean, I know this just because I look at this all the time. If I don't go anywhere, if I just stay home in a day, I, I'll walk maybe 26, 2800 steps. Um, yeah, like just I, being in the house. But that's, yeah. I mean, that's like a quarter of what I'm supposed to be doing, which, by the yeah. way, is a topic I'm going to address soon uh, in this series, which is exercise. Um, because I would say a lot of people like us, I mean, you, you know, you, you get up, you walk a lot. I mean, I would say, I know when it's warm out, you guys walk as a family and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, I don't, <laughs> and this is a problem. Um, I used to walk a lot and then this past year mm-hmm. I stopped exercising because of the diet, you know, I actually supposed to 
exercise when you start the diet because that um, short circuits it by making you hungry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I need to pick up on this. So yeah. Anyway, this is a, yeah, this is an area. Um, I'm surprised. So how much do you walk now? All right. So now, but now you have conference calls and you're turning something terrible into something useful. Yeah. So with doing that, uh, during Mm -hmm. a 30 minute conference call, I can walk roughly a mile and a half. And so that's what I, I should know how many, how many, do you know how many steps that is? You're, You're measuring it by distance. Yeah, I'm measuring it by um, distance. Um, so it's I just don't, like going I don't from centimeters that, to inches. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll look. I can look this up. Um, yeah. W- what I mean by that is it's not easy for me to calculate it in my head for some reason because math, you know, is hard. Uh, that's great. And so on any given day, you probably have uh, a call or two or whatever. Yep. And you walk around your house, like you stay in the house. Yes. Yes. So that's that's sort See, of the I downside. That, I mean, I have... I have joined a gym and I go to the gym every other day. Uh, but excluding yeah. that, that was just kind of, I just want to get back into shape. Um, but yep. yeah, so realistically, you can't really see it here, but I, it sounds kind of boring, but whatever. I walk from basically my studio. Uh, I started with just walking over to the, the flight of stairs that goes up into my house. And then obviously now I'm doing, I'll do several flights of stairs during a conference call. And the, the kind of key here is that it can't be a distraction to the call because if everyone hears you like huffing and puffing in the background, (laughs) they're going to assume that you're dying. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. Um, interesting. See, I can't, I I don't think I could do that. Um, first of all, we have a dog now and it would probably attack me because (laughs) I was moving so much and not taking it anywhere. Um, Hmm. I guess you could go, I mean, if you've trusted the, quality of the calls you get in the neighborhood you could do this out in the world but then you'd also have uh, potential for ambient sound yep that they would hear which would you know would not be good yeah i can see myself walking around the neighborhood a little i mean it's one thing when it's like an internal team call like i don't mind like if there's ambient noise or whatever um but Mm -hmm. there were quite a few microsoft calls in there where you might need to take notes so i need to be within kind of distance to be able to run back to a computer uh, the big thing that change that I made is that I answer all the calls now on my phone rather than on the PC. So I don't have to worry so much about like a Bluetooth headset connected to the PC. I just put headphones in <laughs> and then just kind of. Right, 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 right. That's, that's so. pretty cool. So you've been doing this almost a year now. Since, almost a year. Yeah. Over 30 yeah, miles. That's walking. smart. You know, it's just. This it's is like uh, because, making lemonade, you know. I'm yeah. kind of stuck with these lemons that are beatings. <laughs> and, uh, yep. I'm going to, I'm going to turn it into something good for me. That's good. Yeah. No, I mean, that's when, when I realized how little, and when I say six to 700 steps, I mean, that's me just in a day of work, right? Not chasing the kid around. Just, I got to some of those numbers when I wasn't work with the kid and the wife was gone Mm -hmm. and I I could just kind of say, okay, what is a day of work in steps? And it's abysmally low because it's not like I walk over to the water cooler to go chat with Paul. Yeah, exactly. Um, so. <laughs> so my wife works at home um, as well. But you're, uh, I would imagine you're there for most of the day by yourself. Yes, it's quite nice. <laughs> it's <laughs> I was just uh, <laughs> contemplating how wonderful that would be. Yeah. Yep. So, hmm. all right. You good, Paul? <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, I'm good. <clears throat> cool. All right, folks. Well, that wraps it up for today. Uh, we'll figure out the schedule because I can imagine we're probably not going to do the podcast on Friday because it is one week till Christmas. If you haven't ordered your gifts, um, it's over. Yeah. Yeah. You might need to be going to pick that up. But uh, as always, folks, have yourselves a wonderful day and we'll catch you right back here tomorrow. <laughs>